first at 9, this Monday, the 3rd of June 2024. Weather intensifies. Over 80,000 in 23 districts in Sri Lanka displaced due to the prevailing adverse weather. The death toll rises to 16. Second review. International Monetary Fund to take up Article 4 consultations and second review of Sri Lanka's EFF for discussions next week. Finance State Minister requests support of all countries. Extended. The Colombo District Court extends an interim order preventing Minister Dr. Vijaydasa Rajapaksa from functioning as SLFP chairman by a further 40 days. More tourists. Sri Lanka welcomes over 890,000 tourists by the end of the fifth month of 2024. From Adaderana, this is Adaderana First at Nine with Indivadi Amuata. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. And a very warm welcome. We are here with the very latest from across Sri Lanka and around the world um, on developments here at home. Of course, we have the extreme flood situation and landslides due to the ongoing monsoon conditions. But before we take you to the disaster situation developing in the country, um, let's start off with the economic front where discussions are ongoing with the International Monetary Fund. The global lender, IMF, is to take up for discussion its Article 4 consultation and second review under the Extended Fund Facility for Sri Lanka on the 12th of June. During the session, the global financial lender will evaluate Sri Lanka's economic policies and reform progress so far under the Extended Fund Facility Program extended to Sri Lanka. Upon conclusion, the IMF is set to disperse the third tranche of the fund amounting to around 330 million US dollars. State Minister for Finance Shrihan Semasinghe said that the review is being done to discuss where Sri Lanka currently is and to finalize the memoranda of understanding with bilateral creditors. In March this year, the IMF commenced the second review of its 2.9 billion US dollars extended fund facility program for Sri Lanka, after which the third tranche of the program, amounting to around 330 million US dollars, is due for disbursement. Sri Lanka received the first tranche of the loan in March 2023 after the executive board approved the 48 month EFF program. The IMF executive board cleared the first review of Sri Lanka's bailout package in December last year, providing a approximately 337 million US dollars in funds as the second tranche. Commenting on the upcoming review, the State Minister of Finance Shahan Semasinghe has said that Sri Lanka looks forward to continued support of all countries for a successful review to unlock the third tranche, which will further enhance economic stability, growth and reform efforts. The reviews come as Sri Lanka is moving on to the second round of discussions with commercial bondholders and working towards securing memoranda of understanding with bilateral creditor countries. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. TV te hamatana ka dima smart venna. Poli avitara geva gane yanna. CDB smart draft. In politics, an interim order issued preventing Justice Minister Dr. Vijayadasa Rajapaksa from functioning as chairman of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party was further extended by the Colombo District Court this morning. This interim order was issued when the relevant plaint was called before Colombo District Judge Sandun Vithana this morning, who directed the plaint to Colombo Additional District Judge Chamari Virasuria, appearing on behalf of the respondent's attorney at law, Jamudita Jayasuria requested additional time to file objections related to the case. Accordingly, the case was ordered to be recalled on the 13th of July, granting time for relevant objections to be filed. As such, the injunction will remain in effect until the 13th of July. The interim order was issued by the Colombo District Court on the 20th of May this year, pursuant to a plaint filed by parliamentarian of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, Duminda Dasanayaka. 
Leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadasa, says he has plans to lead the country towards a civilized era sans corruption before the end of this year. Addressing a gathering, the opposition leader commented on education systems in several other countries and highlighted the need to adopt similar measures in Sri Lanka. Meanwhile, former SLFP members this Karaliyatta and Dr. Tilak Rajapaksa joined Sajid Premadasa's party, the Samagi Jana Balavegia, today. Sri Lanka Freedom Party's former Madhavachya constituency organizer and former MP Tissa Karaliyadda joined the Samagajan Balavegaya. He was appointed SJB's co-organizer in the Madhavachya area. Meanwhile, Dr. Tilak Rajapaksha, who was elected to parliament through Sri Lanka Podujanam Peramuna, today attended SJB's 218th edition of Sakwala program in Mahaoya in the Ampara district. We should provide a generation capable of facing any challenge. There are some countries with the highest education ranking in the world. The school syllabus of such countries are based on data received from the international labor market. The system should also be implemented here. This is where individual-centered education practices are essential to be developed. However, what happens in the country right now is much different. Deception and lies prevail within this country each and every day. Before the end of this year, we will create a civilized era where corrupt is reduced. Moving on to Sri Lanka's um, economic front again and tourist arrivals. Sri Lanka has welcomed a total of 108,666 tourists from the first uh, until the 1st of May to the 30th of May. During the last week, from the 2nd to the 30th of May, 29,234 tourists visited Sri Lanka. The total number of tourists for May 2024 represents an increase of 30.43% from a year earlier. According to a weekly report, India secured the top spot with 31,225 arrivals to Sri Lanka, followed by the Maldives with 7,984 tourists and the United Kingdom with 7,844. Sri Lanka, which is set to a goal of welcoming 2.3 million tourists during 2024, has so far achieved nearly 50% of the target, welcoming 893,316 tourists until May end. On the controversy surrounding um, the presidential elections, General Secretary of the United National Party, Palita Rangabandara, today defended his recent statement calling to delay elections by two years as not anti-democratic. He called on all political parties to unite to ensure that the program in place to achieve economic stability is implemented uninterrupted. Meanwhile, independent parliamentarian Professor G.L. Pires argued that tenors of all future presidents will have to be extended if President Ranil Vikramasinghe's tenure is extended as urged by Palita Rangabandara. During a media briefing on the 28th of May, General Secretary of the United National Party, Palita Rangabandara, stated that a proposal to postpone the general election by two years must be tabled in Parliament. Bring in a proposal to Parliament to postpone the presidential election and general election by two years rather than holding elections at this difficult time. We urge this be implemented by means of a referendum if needed as it is more practical and democratic. Members of the Jana Aragalaya Puravasio gathered in front of the UNP headquarters in Sirikota to show objection to the statement when Palithurangi Bandara had organized to meet the media. Amidst the demonstrations, Palithurangi Bandara addressed the media at Sirikota. I have not made an anti-democratic statement. I made a statement based on a clause in the constitution. A majority of the people of this country trust the president's plan after he took over the country during the struggle. It is the opinion that I stated to you. On the other hand, we are to pay off a substantial amount of debt in 2027 and we will also have to obtain more loans for development projects. Now is the time to prepare the country for this. Certain parties might object to my opinion. However, I request them to reach consensus as political parties and prepare themselves to carry out this economic recovery plan. 
The country will fall back to where it was if the current program is changed. Therefore, let us come reach an agreement that this program will be continued and then we can go for a presidential election. I request political parties to make a statement in this regard. I also requested Sajid Premadasa and Anurukumar Disanayaka to do so. However, Sajid Premadasa and Anurukumar Disanayaka have not expressed any objections so far. I believe they have no objections to the proposal I put forward. If it is against democracy, I would not have called for a referendum. Today, too, several parties commented on the recent statement made by General Secretary of the UNP, Palitharange Bandara. The UNP has become a party that provides political joke. It is disappointing that those who call themselves the leaders of the UNP do not know about the constitution of the party. I stopped being a member of the UNP after 2020. The UNP also does not have the right to call for disciplinary actions against me. There is no legal basis for a referendum. They say the president's tenure can be extended if the people of the country approve through a presidential election after obtaining a two-thirds majority of parliament. This is not possible. If this is to be done, 10 years of all future presidents too should be extended. They will do whatever possible as they are not willing to hold an election. And also in news tonight, the Avisavila Magistrates Court has ordered for the driver of the private bus that was driving along the railway track in Puakpiti area to be remanded in custody until the 14th of June after being produced to court today. The arrest was carried out after a video of a private passenger bus being driven along the railway tracks parallel to a congested main road had sparked controversy across social media yesterday. Police have filed several charges against the driver, including attempt murder, driving while his driving license was suspended, driving under the influence of liquor, drugs and causing damage to government property. Meanwhile, the bus in question has also been taken into police custody. India's Crime Investigation Department officials have arrested two Sri Lankan nationals and an Indian agent who provided forged Indian passports. Indian police say that there are 21 Sri Lankan nationals who obtained Indian passports in connivance with passport agents. So far, police have arrested 26 individuals, including six agents, six policemen, an employee of the passport Seva Kendra, an Indian authority providing passport-related services, and three Sri Lankan nationals. Here's a look at some local news in brief now. The Udamalua police arrested three individuals yesterday who came to steal a lightning conductor installed in the guarded Salapatara courtyard of the historic Jetavanarama Stupa. The suspects were arrested while recording a video of the lightning conductor with their mobile phones and it is reported that they planned to steal the lightning conductor last night. A three-wheeler overturned and collided with a car, killing two people on the spot in Rukmalgama, Kottava yesterday. The two individuals who were travelling in the three-wheeler died on the spot and the driver of the car and two others were seriously injured and admitted to the Homagama Base Hospital. Civil Organisations and Trade Unions Alliance held a protest near the Diyatoyana roundabout today, calling for the immediate withdrawal of the proposed electricity bill. Later, the protesters engaged in a Satyagraha campaign. Taking you to our top developing story tonight, severe flooding and landslides triggered by the prevailing incessant rains owing to the southwest monsoon have claimed the lives of 16 during the past 48 hours. Adverse weather has displaced over 200 or 23,000 individuals belonging to 23,013 families who are currently being housed at 119 relief centres across the island. State Minister of Defence and Disaster Management Pramita Bandara Tenakorn says that the government has disbursed 122 million rupees to the divisional secretariats of the areas affected by the adverse weather for relief programmes. The Sri Lanka Air Force, meanwhile, has deployed an SLFAF Bell 412 helicopter on standby at the uh, Nelua public grounds in order to immediately respond to any emergency rescue call. In the meantime, the Department of Examinations announced that in view of the prevailing weather conditions, the evaluation of answer sheets of the GCE Ordinary Level Examination will be postponed until the 8th of June. 
23 districts in Sri Lanka are affected due to the southwest monsoon. The highest rainfall of the past 24 hours of 246.5 mm was recorded from Varakapola. Low-lying areas suffered flooding as persistent downpours increased the water levels of rivers Kalani, Kalu, Nilvala, Gin and Attanagaluoya. Increased water levels of the Kalani River resulted in the flooding of the Kalani Mulla, Kolonava and Hangvella areas. President Ranil Vikram Singh paid a visit to the Kolon Nava area to inspect the damages caused by the flood. <laughs> In the meantime, a special meeting was convened at the Kolonava District Secretariat, headed by Senior Advisor to the President on National Security and Chief of Presidential Staff, Sagala Ratnayaka. The water gauge of the Attanagaluoya River at the Dunmale area exceeded major flood level resulting in surrounding low-lying areas being inundated. In the meantime, water gauges of the river Kalu at the Patupaula, Alagava and Millakanda areas exceeded major flood level, while water levels at the Magura and Ratnapura gauges subsided to minor flood level. Overflow from the river Kalu resulted in the inundation of several roads, including the Horana Matugama and the Horana Bulat Singhala roads. Water levels of the Nilwala River at the Talagahagode area rose to major flood level, resulting in flooding along the Matara Kamburupitiya and the Akurasa Matara roads. Meanwhile, water levels of the Ging River, which reached major flood levels yesterday, subsided. However, low lying areas along the river in Nelua, Udugama, and Baddegama remain inundated. The Valipan interchange of the Southern Expressway, which was temporarily closed due to flooding, was reopened for traffic today. The National Building Research Organization, meanwhile, extended the landslide warnings issued to nine districts for another 24 hours. Notably, Level 3 evacuation warnings have been issued to areas in the Kalambo, Kalutara and Kegol districts. Taking prevailing inclement weather conditions into account, the Ministry of Education announced that schools in several districts of the Western and Saburagamwa provinces will remain closed tomorrow. Meanwhile, all schools in the Gaul and Mathura districts will be closed tomorrow as well as the day after tomorrow. In the meantime, State Minister of Defence and Disaster Management Premita Bandar Tenakon convened a media briefing at the Department of Government Information. Due to the inclement weather, 23 districts, 251 divisional secretariats and 87,379 members of 23,723 families have been affected. According to the information we have received, 12 people have died, including 4 in Matara, 5 in Ratnapura and 3 in Sita Kalambo. 5 people are missing. However, we will not categorize them as deceased until we find their bodies. There are 23,706 individuals belonging to 2,313 families in 119 relief centers at the moment. The President has issued special orders to the Treasury to release the necessary funds to provide relief. For that, we have already provided 122 million rupees for the divisional secretariats. We plan to discuss with the Ministry of Health to provide medical facilities for those who are in relief centers. Meanwhile, State Minister of Provincial Councils, Local Government and Environment, Janaka Vakkumura, announced that President Ranil Vikram Singha has given directions to utilize funds allocated for the national celebration of the World Environment Day to aid those affected by the prevailing adverse weather. Welcome back. 
In business, state-run domestic gas supplier Literal Gas says the prices of its domestic LP gas cylinders are scheduled to be further reduced with effect from midnight tomorrow. Chairman of Literal, Mudita Piri, said the new prices will be announced tomorrow morning. Earlier last month, the price of Literal domestic LP gas cylinders were adjusted downward. A 12.5 kilogram cylinder was reduced to 3,940 while the price of a 5 kilogram cylinder was reduced to 1582 rupees the price of a 2.3 kilogram cylinder was reduced to 740 rupees taking into the colombo stock exchange the bowls continued its course in a negative direction amidst another day of low sentiment and uncertainty the benchmark all share price index closed at 12,050, falling to its lowest levels since April, marking a 0.46% decrease from the previous day. Market has reflected a decline in investor sentiment and a dwindling interest from high net worth investors. Turnover saw a significant decrease, standing to 668.7 million rupees, falling to its lowest levels in the past week and experiencing a 42.2%. 41.2% decrease from the previous trading day. The food, beverage and tobacco sector led turnover at 21% followed by the capital goods and materials sectors jointly contributing to 27% of overall turnover. There was a net foreign outflow of 68.4 million rupees signaling interest in outward investments. Market overall experienced a day of limited activity and sentiment amidst uncertainty. Senior Analyst of Capital Alliance, Diluksha Dimel, joins us now with a few thoughts to round off our Markets in View segment for the week. During the week ending 31st May 2024, the benchmark ASPI recorded at 12,106.5, down 1.96% compared to the previous trading week. The S&P 20 also followed this trend, declining by 2.7% to settle at 3,569 points. May saw the first monthly dip in the market since January due to the uncertainties surrounding elections and the rights issue announced by Commercial Bank. Year-to-date ASPI gain for the month was 13.6%, down from 16% in April. However, total market turnover for the week was recorded at 4.9 billion rupees, a 28% increase compared to the previous week, with both the domestic and foreign participation improving. Moving on to last week's Treasury bill auction, yields continued to decline in the 3 month, 6 month, and 12 month by 14, 13, and 11 basis points respectively. And on the international front, the SP 500 and the NASDAQ both showed declines amidst investor expectations of a Fed rate cut. SP 500 declined by 0.5% while the Nasdaq saw a 1.1% decline. In commodities, oil prices declined by 0.9% to close at $81.4. And here's a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded across other currencies today. Taking you to corporate affairs now, Expo Lanka Holdings PLC extended the deadline for its exit offer until the 10th of June this year amidst ongoing legal proceedings on delisting from the Colombo Stock Exchange. With that, here's a look at more corporate news in brief. Expo Lanka Holdings PLC stated that it is extending its exit offer till Monday, the 10th of June. On the 1st of March, SG Holdings, the parent company of Expo Lanka, announced it was delisting the company from the Colombo Stock Exchange. Some minority shareholders, however, filed a case challenging the delisting of Expo Lanka Holdings before the Court of Appeal of Sri Lanka. The court is scheduled to hold a further hearing on the 6th of June. 
Meanwhile, in line with Sinopec's one-year anniversary of commencing business operations in Sri Lanka, a special event was held today to inaugurate the modified Sinopec fuel station in Navagamur. With this modification, Sinopec will provide highest quality fuel service to meet environmental protection standards. The Chinese Petroleum Corporation further aims to modify 149 more fuel stations over the next three years. 50 more fuel stations are anticipated to be built during the coming years. The Securities and Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka, together with the Colombo Stock Exchange, recently conducted two awareness sessions on revised corporate governance rules for company secretaries and board secretaries of listed companies. The sessions offered a platform for the company and board secretaries to understand their role and responsibilities. The sessions discussed how boards or company secretaries should relate their role to governance requirements and become a value-adding fit to the board governance process. And that wraps up tonight's edition of First at Nine. Be sure to join us tomorrow at the same time for the very latest. I am Indivari Amwatha. Good night.